the past few weeks, you've watched us work tirelessly to rebuild this run-down vintage Airstream trailer in an attempt to transform it into our modern tiny home on wheels. We had a never-ending to-do list and less than two weeks to make this tiny home move in ready. But things were finally starting to take shape. Last episode, you watched us mill a beautiful board of walnut into lovely little planks, and now we were laminating them to plywood. This wooden mosaic would soon become our gorgeous walnut countertops. The countertop project really got us excited. The grain of each piece of wood is unique, so we had fun arranging them all and getting creative. We glued and pressed each piece to the plywood and then left to set. Finally, we would trim the overhanging pieces and then sand through the various grits until we were left with a perfectly smooth walnut masterpiece. While the countertops are setting, we are moving on to the next big job on the project list. Power! Where is it? What are we doing with it? I think we're going to run a plug up here because we're going to have a little countertop beside the bed here so we'll put an AC receptacle here. We're talking about using this under window space as our working space and desk space so I think we'll stick receptacle here inside of the cabinet. So a receptacle here for the fridge and then another one on that side and then another one up there underneath the seating area that we haven't even thought about yet. <laughs> we haven't talked about it at we all. We haven't even gotten to it. some electrical through this side of the trailer and now we're going to start on the other side and we'll do some plumbing in through the bathroom as well. Special delivery! Straight from Amazon. Is that pizza? I wish. It's oh. even better. <laughs> it's faucets. Yay! Faucet time. Faucets. All right, what are we doing with those? I don't know yet. Okay. I've never used these before. Okay. I. I'm guessing we put water into them. Interesting. Mm. Looks like jewelry or something. I got you a ring. <laughs> it's square. It's modern. I do. <laughs> What's in there? It is our shower faucet valve wow. and handle. So shiny. It was really hard to find a matte black faucet that was actually had a shallow enough depth to fit in one and a half inch framing on the wall. So you'll see here that it only just makes it inside the wall. So just trying to work out where we're gonna put our shower head in this wet bath that we're building. So there's not a whole lot of space in here. We've got the wheel well to my left and then there's gonna be a shower curtain here. So just trying to work out and the toilet will be there where you're gonna to wanna to stand to wash your hair and how tall this needs to be. And I think we're thinking like right here for height. Yeah, it looks pretty good to me. It looks like, like it's gonna hit you straight on. Standing center. <laughs> Perfect. I'm always nervous when we drill a hole through something, especially yeah. this wall because it took Jane so long to scribe the rounded edge, so. I feel like permanently putting holes in things really confronts you with your level of commitment. <laughs> it's true. Because like, once it's done, you can't really unhole it, you know? No. So, let's All right. get it right the first time. Commit, baby. I'm gonna double check my measurements just before we go ahead here. I'm gonna put my pencil. <laughs> The most frequently asked question. Yeah, like seriously, where did I put my pencil? Probably actually be better off drilling this from the other side. Lovely. So if we're 16 
cream and three quarters at the top. And we basically want our faucet to be 16 and three quarters at the bottom so it's all in line, right? It's a miracle. We managed to get the uh, shower head and the shower handle lined up and screwed into the rear wall. First try. And I gotta give full credit to Allison for coming up with the winning plan to get everything to line up. She said, why don't we just dip the backs of them in paint and stamp them against the wall through the holes so that we know where they sit. And I was like, you're Brilliant. a genius. Brilliant. <laughs> Thanks, Dave. And look. First try. So any aspiring plumbers out there, hot tip, stamp your faucet backs and then just press them to all together and you can see where it all lines up. Or just hire Allison. <laughs> she does consulting for plumbing now. Good teamwork. So we've drilled our holes through our wall to run our PEX piping. We've got it roughly mapped out with what T's and elbows that we need for our hot and cold lines. So the next stage is we're going to run a continuous PEX line from our tank, which is going to sit under the front here. And then it's going to run from, I'm going to start calling this the port side. <laughs> One continuous tube from the tank here all the way down through the frame, base frames of the cabinetry, all the way around under the bed, through the closet, through this wall, along the wheel well, and into this wall where it'll meet the first tee to tee off the cold water for the shower. And then it'll continue for the cold water for the kitchen sink, and then also the hot water heater, which will be the cold input to the hot water. So that's the plan. So we're gonna run some piping around. Run some piping around. going to be my favorite tubing, the red tubing. Red is for hot and hot water is going to be such a luxurious upgrade. Because James and I have been living for the last 18, 18 months 18 without months. hot water. We've been boiling little kettles on the stove just so I can wash my armpits. <laughs> That's a lie, you don't wash your armpits. <laughs> But we're excited to have some hot, hot water washer. on demand. It's going to be awesome. Well, that's 
hope they don't leak. yet to install the mixing valve so we're just going to leave that out until we buy the o-rings and then these lines will run to the hot and cold teas for the uh, kitchen faucet and then those lines will run through a check valve into the hot water heater so that's what it's looking like but we need some parts from home depot to finish this project we basically ran it to the sink cabinet and we're gonna adventure mm -hmm. to Home Depot. Back to Home Depot. Just waiting for uh, my friend's boyfriend, who's an electrician, to call me back. But I think the plan is punch a hole out through the box it comes in. You attach your hot lead to a, a first breaker and then a jumper to your second breaker. Your negative lead attaches to this bus bar and then your ground attaches to this little bus bar that you screw into this little hole here to ground the box. Then you run for both of your circuits. Your hot leads run off the bottom of your breakers. Your neutral leads run off your neutral bus bar and then your grounds run back to your main ground that then grounds everything back to shore. I think. Could someone give me a call about this? <laughs> I don't want to kill myself. But nothing's plugged in yet, so there's no current in any of the wires, so no chance of getting electrocuted just yet. It is Airstream After Dark. Welcome to the Late Night After Dark Late Night Show. <laughs> With your host. Late night James. <laughs> Electrical James. Electrical James. He's so electric. James is electric tonight. You're very illuminated. I need to fix this lighting. I am illuminated. <laughs> knockout. Apparently these things are called knockouts. You're a knockout. We're not doing regular electrical here in our trailer because the only wire I could find that actually had an insulated ground wire was this one that had three insulated wires running slightly more insulation. So in this application, we're gonna have a white neutral, a red hot, and a black ground, and we're not gonna use the bare copper ground. And I'm gonna make a note in the breaker box to state that that's how the electric has been run so if anybody ever opens it up they know that the black insulated wire is being used as our ground just to do with vibration and movement I didn't want to be in a situation where we end up grounding out our electrical on something else so I figured better safe than sorry and have an insulated ground so I'm just gonna clip these bare wire grounds back and wire up this black wire to be our common ground What I understand, you always want to wrap your wires clockwise around your screws. That way, as you apply tension to your screw heads, you're actually winding the copper onto the screw, as opposed to if you wound it anti-clockwise, as you tighten the screw, you would be pushing the wire off the screw head. Yeah. Those are the threads that you want to use. Those okay. orange morets are too little for it. They'll get right. really warm. So like, this is a yellow moret, so that's probably too big. That's too big. Yeah, yeah so... This is the one on your left hand side. Right, gotcha. Nice 
Nice work. That was a toughie. Your hair looks like you got electrocuted. <laughs> you look really scary. <sighs> Hopefully the place doesn't burn down. <laughs> oh, we should get fire insurance. Full disclosure, I'm a nurse. <laughs> I like washing my hands and doing bed baths. <laughs> I, I like to bring old ladies cups of tea. <laughs> it's kind of my jam. This electrical thing, I dabble. <laughs> but I think there's gonna be a lot of electricians out there who see this and uh, less than impressed. Oh well. They're probably just like, you just made a 110 grounding loop. It's a Welcome to destruction. It's a DIY trailer reno. Anyways, wanna go inside and make some stir fry? Is it that time? It's that time. Let's shut this place down. I just want to keep walking. There's so much work to do. If you're enjoying these videos, it would really help us out if you gave us two clicks. One to subscribe and the other to give a thumbs up. Thanks for the support, y'all, and we'll see you next week.